All right, guys, today we're going to uh, just do a little maintenance. I'm gonna change the diff fluid out of the rear differential. Um, I've got about 85,000 miles on the rig. I won't say they've been hard miles, but not easy miles. We've done a little tra trailer towing, a little off-roading, a little trails. Um, so I know Toyota recommends changing it out, I think at 20,000 under extreme use. You read people going well over 100,000, never seeing it even you know, getting dark. Uh, I figured 85,000 ish. It's so cheap. Let's just uh, let's change out the rear, and the rear will kind of be my litmus test uh, to see if I do the front and the transfer case. If it looks good, I'm not going to bother. Um, but if it looks like it's time to do uh, the front as well, just based off of what the rear looks like, we'll grab a couple more quarts of quarts of fluid and do that as well. So the rear is pretty easy. Um, Toyota recommends a 75W, I believe. 80 or 85 oil which is super expensive so just about any 75w 90 will work i got the lucas i just picked it up at o'reilly's last night and one of the other important things you want to make sure it's synthetic and gl5 rated that's the uh service level that toyota requires so again lucas synthetic oil 75 90 will be just fine i think it was i don't know 15 bucks a quart uh roughly takes just under three quarts to do the rear, so I grab three. Uh, any leftover will go towards the front, which I think takes two. But anyways, uh, for the rear, three quarts of oil and the gaskets for the drain and fill plug. Um, you can order these online. I picked these up at Toyota last night. Uh, I'll put the part number in the description below, but so one, two, one, five, seven, dash one, zero, zero, one, zero. Online, they're cheap, I think you can get you know, like a five or six pack for 10 bucks cost me three dollars and fifty cents each at the dealership down the road so it only takes two the rear differential uses the same one for the fill and the drain um, it is actually the same one for the fill on the front differential so i did grab one of those while i was there um, and i have the drain one for the front ordered because they didn't have it in stock just in case i need to do it so two gaskets for the rear three quarts of fluid and the plugs are a 24 millimeter um, so you'll want a 24 millimeter six point socket. The six point is important because it won't round them off. If you don't have a 24, a 15 16 is almost exactly the same. And it is important, important to use that six point. Um, you don't want to use the 12 point cause it'll round them off. So that being said, I got my breaker bar, socket, fluid, washers, and drain. I've already taken out the spare tire. You can do this without removing the spare tire, but it just makes it that much easier. Um, Cause it's so easy to get out of there and it gives you all the room to work. So let's climb under the rig and start draining the fluid. Oh, and I did drive a couple miles just before I got here just to put a little heat in it. So it'll drain a little easier. Shouldn't matter too much cause it's not that cold out, but figured it couldn't hurt. So, all right, let's get under there. All right, so under the back of the rig, just to give you a little orientation, we're looking at the rear of the rear axle. This is where the spare tire normally is, which has been removed. Front of the vehicle's up there. Um, got the drain pan, and I grabbed this little cup because I want to catch some of the fluid to see how it looks, because if it just goes to the pan, we won't see it. And pretty simple, on the rear diff here, this is the fill plug, and the drain plug is under here. So, gonna remove the fill plug first, um, and then the rear or the drain plug and it sounds like these things would be a bit of a bear so we're gonna see if we can get them out of there without too much trouble and uh drain some fluid Oh, it doesn't look too bad. It actually looks pretty decent. Like I said, I caught that little cup there so, with some so I can check it out, but uh, actually looks good. Probably didn't need to be replaced, but again, it doesn't hurt. So we're just gonna give this a minute, let it drain out, and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, so it's still draining. It's getting close, um, but wanted to point out a couple things. So one, 
here's the drain plug and oh, I guess the crush washer is on there I thought it didn't come out with it but it did okay so that's easy but your drain plug also has a magnetic portion to it so it's not uncommon to see some shavings See if we can see this here so those are all metal shavings which is pretty common as long as there's no big chunks which I wouldn't suspect there to be any we're good that's just the regular shavings again this is the uh, factory fluid so it's all the shavings from you know just the gears breaking in and being new uh, that's not bad at all so just make sure you wipe that off give it a good reset and if you ever get confused or can't tell which one's the fill and the drain, the drain has the magnet. The fill is actually hollow on the bottom. So again, drain plug has the magnet. Um, it honestly looks like it's the same plug. They just maybe epoxy a magnet in there. Uh, but anyways, just wanted to show that. We'll get these cleaned up, let it finish draining. It's about done and we'll go from there. All right, so I'm going to try to show this without making too big of a mess, but here's the oil that drained out. Oops, poured a little on the ground, but it doesn't look too bad. Try to focus on there. <clears throat> it's not really milky. I can see through it a little bit. So I don't think it was at its end of its life. I think it still had plenty left, but again, it can't hurt to change it. So that's why I caught a little in this cup, just so I can see what it looked like. All right, guys, so there's lots of debate on whether you should replace your crush watches or not. I know there's people that said they've never replaced them, they've never had a problem, and I believe them. But let me just show you, if this will show up, the two in the middle, <clears throat> excuse me, the two in the middle are the used ones that are already crushed, and the two on the outside are the new ones. You can see they do crush and get used up. So, for the few bucks, I'm just going to replace them. But, uh, just wanted to kind of show that. Alright, so the fluid's about drained, it's just dripping. We can let it drip all day and won't get much more out. So, new crush washer on the drain plug. Drain plug's got the magnet. Get her started here. All right, so I'm gonna move the pan out of the way for just a second here. So we've got the breaker bar. I'm just gonna put a little oomph on it. Then, we're going to do something I don't normally do, but since it does involve crush washers, we're going to torque them with a torque wrench. Uh, factory spec on these plugs are 36 pounds, foot pounds, um, for the drain and the fill. Okay, 36 pounds. Um, obviously, Put the drain plug in first because you got to fill it through the fill hole. So, to wipe that down some. Next up, let's fill. Okay, so, like I said, the rear diff takes almost three quarts. I think it's 2.9 with the locker, which this has. Um, but basically, you fill it until it comes dripping out that hole, which can be interesting. Some companies make this fluid with bags or in bags. You can get the gallons at the pump. Um, these quarts with the squeeze nozzle shouldn't be too bad because without the spare tire, there's plenty of room. All right, guys, that was it. Um, it took almost all three quarts. There's a little bit left in there. Again, I think it says 2.9 is what it should take, which is about what it worked out to. Um, just started to drip out of the hole, and we're good. Put the uh, 
the fill plug in with the new crush washer. Torque it to 36 pounds. That's all there is to it. So I'm just gonna clean up. I uh, gotta remember to pull the GoPro before I drive off, get the spare tire back in there. And uh, that's it, super simple. One thing I wanna mention, I don't know how much it's gonna affect the 4Runner, but you know, several years ago I had a Jeep that was geared and locked and all that. But uh, changing the rear diff fluid to synthetic, specifically I believe I used this Lucas um, back then, actually made the thing drive much better. Now, again, it had a full Detroit locker, so probably a little more temperamental to the fluid, but it gave it a lot more uh, fuel mileage. Like I can notice uh, over time as the fuel mileage would decrease, it was usually because the fluids were getting worn in the diffs. So be interesting to see if I notice anything in the 4Runner. I don't think I will because their tolerances are a little different and uh, the fluids now, I mean, it was synthetic from the factory where I don't believe the Jeep was. I'm pretty sure it was conventional. So probably made a big difference right there. So anyways, let's uh, get this buttoned up and get cleaned up and be done for the day. It's Saturday and it's nice out. All right guys, so all wrapped up, all cleaned up. Um, simple project, that would take, I'm staring right in the sun. Uh, that would have been about an hour project at the most if I didn't have to film and everything. So, uh, cause yes, the filming, <laughs> as simple as it sounds, adds, it, it almost doubles the time it takes to do everything plus the editing. So at any rate, we're all done, all cleaned up. And uh, get this pulled out of here, be done for the day, enjoy the weather. As you can tell, it's nice out, so. Uh, thanks everyone. Hope this helped some of you. Again, everything I use uh, in the description below, you know, all the fluids and everything, just so you don't have to reference the video if you don't want um, or you don't have the time to. But again, super easy, uh, super easy task. So thanks again. We'll see ya.